So this is the front end group update for August 8th, 2017. Uh, my name is Jacob Schatz. I am one of the front end leads. And this covers um, both the uh, functional uh, group update for the front end uh, DC and AC. So accomplishments, um, we have been doing a lot of UI polish. So in the previous uh, 9.4, we finished 91 or something like 85 UI polish issues. And we're continuing to uh, battle through those. And that just involves cleaning up the uh, user interface and little things like margins here and there, um, which just makes such a huge difference. And so if you see any inconsistencies in the UI of GitLab, then definitely report those and we will um, get to them. The group level issue boards is uh, almost finished. Uh, Simon is working on that. And that is not in yet, but that will be in in 10.0. The confidential issue page redesign is uh, really great. Uh, Regis worked on that, and that is going to be in 9.5. Uh, we put together web pack code splitting. So there's a lot of stuff that will improve the performance of GitLab tremendously. And Tim's team did a lot of that, uh, including web pack code splitting, where only the code that is needed is included on a given page. and removed all the inline JavaScript. So there was a lot of inline JavaScript. And this is something we've been trying to do for a long time. And now that we have the bandwidth to do it, it's absolutely fantastic. And JavaScript is deferred. Um, so what that means is that all the things that were slowing down the page uh, from loading on the front end side are fixed, or a lot of those things are fixed uh, on the most primitive level of loading um, JavaScript. And so the long and short of it is that this will make GitLab uh, a lot faster. And the repo editor is in under a feature flag as well. So then some fancy GIFs here for you. We have the collapsible sidebar and flyout menu, um, which you can see here, which looks really fantastic. And here's just a quick GIF of the uh, repo editor. And that is, uh, the start to a really big thing in GitLab, boom, right? Um, and what that'll allow you to do is um, edit multiple files at once and um, instead of going to different pages. Um, some of the concerns were we were doing too much in one month. So the more code that you write, that means the more regressions that you're going to have just from a line by line uh, situation. The more code that you write, the more regressions you'll have. Uh, also, the more characters you'll have on the page. Um, so the solution is, I'll get to the M&Ms in a second. Uh, the solution is that we started giving less deliverables in a month. And when you uh, have less work on your plate, then you can have a lot less regressions. Uh, and then you can focus on uh, more, you can focus on one thing at a time or less things at a time, which helps people to uh, be able to get a lot less regressions. Uh, we started, um, my wife is a surgeon and in surgery, they do something called M&Ms, which actually stands for morbidity and mortality, uh, which I've mentioned this before. And what that is, is uh, surgeons, it's obviously a lot more critical if they make mistakes because people die. And when people die, they always go over that and they, they have a big meeting and they talk about what happened and so that they try and prevent it from happening again. And I believe that we should take uh, regressions as seriously um, or very seriously uh, as well. So we started doing something similar to that where we um, list a bunch of uh, all the regressions that happen. And this is not about pointing fingers, but this is about uh, finding out what went wrong. Um, it, it's a post-mortem, um, but it's a very specific post-mortem uh, or a retrospective. It's about finding what went wrong, how we can do better, and how each individual can do better, and how we can prevent sort of things like this from happening in the future. Um, people, right, people aren't dying from regressions, uh, but they die inside. So it, no, the, the thing is that we should be taking all regressions very, very seriously, and we should try to not uh, have regressions happen in the first place. And if we can 
put more, shine a light on how they're happening in the first place, then um, I think that we can avoid them in the future. I think that that is something that is, you know, within our control. So we might as well do it. Um, and also we've been planning, we've been doing this for a while, but we started to really get more in depth. We're planning the next release and we start that planning on the 7th. Um, and we're giving each item a total weight so that we can, you know, over time we're figuring out how much uh, one person can handle. There's a link to the 10.0 and you can see on each tab in that Excel spreadsheet or on the Google spreadsheet, um, right, every new feature is a bug waiting to happen, I like that, uh, that you can see each tab uh, has a list of all the features, who's working on them, how much weight it is, and what the priority and the order that people should do them in. Um, and I think that this is something that we can put into GitLab, you know, more visibility uh, for managers uh, and other people. And Philippe and Clement uh, and Tim, we always do this all together, and it really helps a lot get a big uh, picture of how the uh, release is going to go. Um, and also to prevent UI regressions, and that's like the visual regressions from happening, um, we started a framework where um, a server uh, that is currently running on DigitalOcean, basically two times a day, it follows the instructions on how to install GitLab from source, it installs GitLab from source, runs through a bunch of the app, and starts taking screenshots. And in a little bit, it will actually diff the screenshots against a previous release um, and see what has changed. And so that we can get, and it does this on multiple browsers. So it'll do this on IE and Firefox and Google Chrome and uh, all that stuff. And so that we're starting to get more visibility into the UI regressions that are happening so that we're at least uh, aware of them. And so you can go to that screenshot archive and you'll see that a really interesting thing is that uh, you'll see a lot of 500 errors because it turns out that um, Often, the, if you follow the instructions, a lot of times you, you won't be able to install GitLab from source um, every time. Sometimes there's uh, just, uh, you know, things that get in your way from that, which is also a good thing for uh, the people who are putting together the GDK so they can um, uh, so, uh, so put together the GDK so that they can see whether or not this... Uh, so the QA project, I took a look at the QA project. The QA project is fantastic. Mine is mainly for taking screenshots and running this against uh, browser stack, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to run this against um, our own sort of browser stack in the future. Um, but this is mainly for taking screenshots and um, pushing them up. So actually the QA project and this are very similar. When I started it, I think the QA project and this started at similar times. And I wound up doing it, uh, you guys wound up doing it all through Ruby and I wound up doing it all through uh, Bash scripts. So uh, I think that we can probably merge the two at some point. Um, so uh, yeah, so because I did a lot of work into this and I didn't know about the Q QA project that in the beginning and now I do know about it. So I just bashed all the things, that's right. So um, it's, it's actually really cool, I, I like it a lot. Um, the one really good thing about it is that it does follow the exact I'll, I'll put the, the code is up, I'll put the code somewhere and then people who are much better at Bash can review it because <laughs> I'm sure that it's not, a lot of it's not kosher. Um, but uh, yes, so the, the thing is that, um, the main thing is that it follows the install from source instructions like to a T. Um, and that's the one thing I really, really wanted to do because a lot of times I find myself trying to install GitLab from source on my own DigitalOcean because I use GitLab for stuff all the time. And I want people to be able to install it like on the first time, like it should install exactly like the install instructions say. So, and a lot of times it just doesn't. So um, if anybody who's doing the GDK, if you go to that screenshot archive and you get a 500, it means that the install instructions don't currently work. One of the recent reasons that it didn't work is because of RE2 and I had to install that and Stan helped me out with that. So. Um, you know, I will keep updating that um, as I can. So, and so we're trying to find solutions to the current problems that we're having. And so those are some of the solutions to those things. Um, we have some big things in the work, um, in the works, the repo editor, uh, which I mentioned before, uh, is currently under a uh, feature flag. Um, and that is 
you know, a work in progress to do much, much cooler things in the future, but you need to start with the repo editor. Um, next month, we're going to, uh, this month in 10.0, we're going to be commenting on images in diffs, which will be the start of uh, our big idea to uh, help UX designers um, actually have GitLab be useful to them because GitLab is not always as useful as it could be. Um, images should be diffed. Images should be revisioned, not just pasted into Markdown and then forgotten because images are just like code. Um, they are revisioned over time as well. And so that also winds up helping everyone. It doesn't have to just be UX designers. You can imagine that NASA or somebody else has their blueprints in here, and those should be diffed over time. And you should be able to comment on a specific um, pixel point of that uh, thing. So um, yes. Um, yes, uh, Remy, we are currently using, I want to use GitLab in the future instead of a spreadsheet, and we can't currently do it. One of the reasons we can't currently do it is because issue boards do not support multiple labels. Is that what it is? They don't support multiple labels. I think that's what it is. And also, I mean, I think that we should just make issue boards support all the things that that spreadsheet supports in the way that I'm using it. Not that it should be a spreadsheet, not that it should be Excel. Um, but in the future, also with the UX stuff, is that uh, the um, commenting on images diff? That's the first step to then having um, an asset library where you can have um, assets that get revisioned over time. Um, and we talked about this. And like the wiki has its own repo, the assets should have their own hidden repo. Um, and then assets that don't belong directly to the repo itself can get revisioned over time and commented on. And this will be really, really cool because then. Um, as an example, UX can say, here's your, um, here's your design and we comment on it and we can go back to different revisions of it. Just like, um, just like we do, uh, for regular code. Yeah. So there's the, uh, use GitLab for front end scheduling. Thank you, Clement. I, I had to do this really quickly. There was a quick switch of, uh, the, the schedule. So that's why I put this together really quickly. So that's that. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to put all the links in here, um, but all the things do have links. Uh, so the UI improvements for a uh, VIA framework, um, we're having big, big performance improvements via Tim's awesome performance tools. He put together site speed and a bunch of other uh, really great things. And they're starting to, not starting to, they've made a bunch of really big improvements and GitLab has been a lot faster. We have lazy image loading um which is really fantastic and it's not just any old lazy image loading it's lazy image loading as you scroll so it's it's very very cool a lot of really great math went into that um uh you know we're trying to reduce the regressions that happen and we're trying to speed up things uh with view where we are rewriting the comment section in view which will in time make the commenting because you can't currently comment you can't have 300 comments on an issue it just or on a merge request it just it's impossible to view it. You type one letter every 20 seconds just because there's a lot of event listeners on there. So we need to improve that over time as well. Uh, and then um, we have a proof of concept that we're trying to get in uh, this month, which is browser testing in GitLab like Sauce Lab. So we have a lot of really cool things in the front end uh, going on. And if anybody has any questions about those things, uh, now is the time to ask those questions. Regarding the screenshots, do you have to go through every screenshot to find the regressions? How are they signaled? That's a great question. Currently, the first step is to just get the screenshots to take pictures, and we can go through them. Um, I think the next step is to signal when there is a difference between the previous release and the current release, which doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything bad. It just means that something changed. Um, and so the key is just to know when something changed. And if we didn't know that it changed, that's when the problem exists. So uh, we have to find a way to signal that, but we currently don't. Uh, the current step is just to um, take the screenshots in the first place, which was kind of a, a big thing. 
Um, yes. Um, right, yeah, just send all the emails to me. Um, currently, I'm using on my, it's, it's my own server right now, just because I wanted to get the thing running really quick. Um, I'm using Image Magic has a thing called Convert. And I know saying Image Magic is like, you know, currently we're not using Image Magic for a lot of things, but I happen to be using it on the server to uh, diff things. And the diff actually matters because you don't necessarily want to do it. There's a lot of different ways to diff images, and currently I'm doing it um, where one side shows green and another side shows red. And then you can really, really see the individual differences. If you just compare on a pixel level, it doesn't do a great job. So I might even diff on in multiple ways. I've played around with a bunch of different um, things like that, different ways to diff. Does anybody else have any other questions? Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me and have a great rest of your day. Bye.